Hello YouTube, hello friends and people in virtual world. Welcome back to Baggies TMD and welcome to Imperial War Museum, Duxford. So yeah, come out for a day at Duxford today. So this is going to be like our first vlog on the channel. We'll take you around, have a look at some of the nice planes we've got down here in Duxford. You've got Concord, sat over there, Lancaster Bomber. Got Tiger Moth, Mosquito, Short Sunderland here. And we've got Harriers, Jaguars, Whirlwinds, Tornado down there. So yeah, we'll go around, take a look at some of the planes. Like I say, we'll splice all this together at home, make it into a bit of a vlog for you. So yeah, keep watching, we'll have loads of planes for you to look at. Here we have one of the most impressive views here at Duxford. You have the Vulcan Bomber, you have the TSR-2, and you have the Concorde. So yeah, TSR-2 was an experimental, experimental attack bomber plane that uh, got some funding pulled from it. There's one here in front of us, also one at Cosford. There is, but here now, just out next to the Lysander, the little Lysander here, which uses a bit of a recon Recon plane used to uh, pick up the spies that used to be dropped in Germany during the war. And it was good at short takeoffs on run, rough run, runways. So yeah, this would come in, pick up the uh, pick up the spies and all the ordnance and all the info they got, shoot shoot straight off again. It's like a very good little uh, little plane. This is looking at one of these, trying to get one in one seventy second, build out of an airfix kit. So yeah, it's quite a quite a nice little plane. So yeah. I say you've got the Vulcans, you can just you can see better now you've got the um, Harrier on the right and the Jaguar on the left. You just see the tail of the uh, tornado, but we'll go down there in a minute and take a take a look at them. So yeah, so you'll say you've got a Vulcan. You got a Lancaster bomber as well down here as well. But we'll go down there in a minute, take a look for you. Here we are then nose on in front of Concorde. Now this is one of the experimental Concords. This one actually flew to the cold conditions and we sat on the runway for hours I think it's like three or four days it was sat on the runway in like minus 30 conditions to see if Concord was actually able to start from a freezing cold start which it did so yeah this is one of the experimental ones fully working we'll go for a walk through in a minute hopefully but yeah last Sunday of every month they drop the nose into its landing positions obviously Concord can drop its nose as his, as his front wheels are so far in front when it comes into land, the nose is that long, you have to drop the nose so the pilots can see the ends of the runway. But I say, we'll take a wonder across here. A bit more of a view, view of the Lancaster here as well, which is quite nice. And obviously, the Mosquito. So, yeah, here's just a quick map of all the planes that are in this first hangar. So, you've got Concord, York, uh, DH9, Tornado, Hastings, Vulcan, loads and loads. There's also a lightning here, I like lightning. Got one then built in uh, in green. We'll take we'll take you for a view one day of all the airfix kits we've got built. But like me and my mate, like after a few drinks, I decided to see if we could build every RAF plane in one seventy second scale. Seemed like a really good idea after a few drinks. But then we realised there's three hundred odd planes to build. So I think we between the pair of us, we built about fifteen. So it's going to keep us going for many years. So yeah, I say just a quick view of what's actually in Duxford in the first hangar. Obviously, there's like five hangars here including uh american hangars got b52 bomber in it that is an absolute beast of a plane it's also a very nice view of the vulcan here as well just whatever side you look from the vulcan it looks nice so yeah i say hopefully we'll go across and go into the back of concord we'll take you for a wonder few so it's got all um all the computers and that from when they used to uh, use it as the test bed here's a bit of a cheeky view through the side window of concord's controls so quite nice sorry the video quality is a bit rough I'm still on my phone and we're quite zoomed in so we can have a quick look inside Concorde there you go quick look at the instrument panels there in the Concorde So here we have one of the uh, Rolls-Royce 
Olympus 593 engines that Concorde had inside it. Concord used to fly with four of these engines. The same engine was actually in the Vulcan bomber as well. So it's an absolute beast of a jet engine. Used to help Concorde reach Mach 2. Absolute beasts. Here's a unique view of underneath Concorde. So you can see the uh, right and left landing gears of Concorde. Obviously you see where the uh, jets are normally housed. There's one open the other side where it was. Nice little scale model there of a BA Concorde, pure luxury flying Concorde is. So yeah, you can see straight down then towards the uh, nose, also like a unique view, there's not many times you can walk underneath the Concorde. It's an absolute beast of a plane, shame that uh, it doesn't fly anymore. So you got these as well on the wings. These are to aid them when they were viewing it for uh, de-icing purposes, to check that the ice had come off its uh, flying surfaces. Yeah, it's like I say, it's the TCR2 uh, sitting there, XR222. Keep trying to find one of these kits as well, because that'd be a nice experimental airplane to have in the collection. But yeah, absolute boost of a plane. Here's the uh, rear of the jets on Concorde. It's a one drop Concorde now. Take a little look through. It's a bit of information on, uh, on the Concorde. 101 was the fastest ever at 1450 miles an hour. I was like, it's, it's just a serious plane. We used to be able to cross the Atlantic to New York in half the time that a 747 would do. It's an absolute beast of a plane. So yeah, like I say, this was one of the test ones. So they've got lots of cables in here. So I used to do the flight test with it before it became a production plane. Yeah. She took the fan you needed, though. Yep, there we go, quick little walk there through Concorde. 
I say it's one of the experimental ones, so it's like full of computers and not many seats. But yeah, it's a nice uh, piece of British and French engineering. I say it's a shame it don't fly anymore, but I think it was costing BA far too much in fuel and it weren't efficient. It couldn't really fly supersonic anymore because everyone was moaning about the sonic booms it was making. So yeah, nice little walk through there. So, yeah, down on the floor now. So we've got uh, Avro Anson Mark One, a bit of a uh, Coastal Command. Reconnaissance aircraft, you see you've got a little gun turret on top of it. Used mainly around the seas of uh, Great Britain during the uh, Second World War. Got that there. We got here, but that's a Spitfire. I always, always get my Spitfires and my Hurricanes mixed up, I really shouldn't anymore, but I still do. So yeah, if you need one though, it's got five propellers. Ones I've built like the old Airfix kit, it's always had a three propeller, so yeah, five propeller one. Obviously. Just pan you around, just see the tail of the Vulcan. Like I say, the Vulcan had the same engines that um, Concorde had. They're just going to go under the wing now of the Vulcan bomber. Now, I had the opportunity, I was up in Newark a few months ago, I actually got the opportunity to go up inside a Vulcan bomber and have a seat inside in the uh, command positions behind the pilot. That was very unique, that was, to be able to do that. Very, very, very ple pleased to be able to do it. Like cost me a pound. So yeah, got Sunderland, the uh, RAF's long range flying boat plane. I actually got one of these to build as well. <laughs> I have a lot of planes to build. So yeah, got that there. Look at the size of that. That is, I believe, blue steel, which was our basic nuclear bomb that the uh, Vulcan, the Victor, and the Valent were able to fly with. So yeah, quite real. Well, that used to be our nuclear deterrent. That used to be a nuclear bomb. You can see, you see the tail there. It's J824. I believe there's a possibility there's some planes flying outside. So hopefully we can get outside in a bit and take some, uh, take some videos of the planes flying. But yeah, here's the uh, tornado. Here's the Tonka. It works, works staying Tonka. Now these are actually retiring in March from RAF service. I think it's 40 years the uh, Tornado's been our main strike plane. I mean, look at the size of the bombs on that. It's just, un it's unreal. You, they look tiny when you start looking at them on uh, videos, but they're absolute beast. So yeah, this is retiring in March. Uh, a, what's taking over now? The uh, F-35B is taking over from uh, from the Tornado, which is, which is an impressive plane, actually, let's face it. So, yeah, you got Tornado. Above that, there's the Jaguar again. And there's the Harrier GR3. So it's got the uh, different front nose compared to what the later... Uh, the um, later Harriers did. I completely forgot what it was called, though. Completely not a memory blank. So, yeah, a little bit of a, a look as well at bombs through the year. So you got some of the early... Bombs from like World War One, going through to World War Two. I'll say going on to the big, the big ass ones that are on the uh, modern planes, cruise missiles, and like I say, the blue steel behind it, which is an absolute beast. It is. You would not want to know that's coming towards you. You wouldn't see it. So I'll say it's going underneath the Vulcan. So Vulcan's here in its camo colours. There's the Lightning aluminium. Yeah, Lightning never got uh, painted really. They did, but they used to keep them in aluminium because they used to polish them up really well. So yeah, let's go under the Vulcan, show you inside his bomb bay. So obviously the blue steel is actually too big to fit in here. So he used to sling it underneath the uh, underneath the plane, but this used to uh, carry a fair few bombs. I think it's going to go on a bombing run. Very impressive plane. Shame they can't keep now on growing, but there's still one that does fly. Well, it just run, uh, run my runs. It doesn't actually take off, but just full power engine runs. Managed to get inside the uh, cockpit of the Vulcan. That is the hatch you get into. So it's like a two-stage ladder that comes down to the ground from there. It's also the emergency escape hatch. If this is going down, you go out of that gap there. Compared to the plane, the cockpit is really small. If I remember, I'll splice some pictures in to uh, show you the inside. Like I say, I got to sit in one. So impressive to sit inside of a Vulcan. Brought next to the airs on the back of your neck stand up, that's for sure. 
picture of the uh, pilots. So this Vulcan set, these used to be on standby just in case anything kicked off during the Cold War. These used to be sat there ready to fly at a moment's notice. Yeah, it's just see any exhaust there for uh, for the Vulcan. She, she's just an absolute beast. <laughs> I keep saying it, but she is. Obviously, you've got the whirlwind up there and the Wessex. Wessex and the whirlwind. Both are Royal Navy planes, uh, planes, helicopters. The uh, well, we used to also do uh, Coast Guard duties until they got took over by the Sea King. Oh, the Sea King's now retired now. I want them to build as well. I've got so many planes to build. Yeah, quit one of the uh, Lightning as well. I think it was one of our first, the British's first interceptor fighters, the uh, Lightning. I'm not too up on my history on planes, so if I get anything wrong, do excuse me. I'll see some more. Uh, more bombs as well there. Here we have the uh, Comet, which was the first jet liner ever to fly. Now the uh, see it's got round windows. The original Comet used to have square windows and had a few uh, failures that ended up with a lot of, a lot of people killed. It used to have square windows, it used to put a lot of stress on the fuselage and on the window itself. So they changed them to round windows. That is why all modern aircraft have round windows to alleviate the stress on the airframe and on the windows. Come out of the first hangar now, now in the second hangar. These are all flying planes. I think they're privately owned, but they're always checking some maintenance in these, uh, these uh, shed here. So yeah, some nice airplanes. Some obviously got some engine cows off. Some are just done some general maintenance done to them. So yeah, we'll take for a wander around here, get up and close personal to as many as we can. So you can see some of our own engine works done to them. Obviously you've got the Flying Legends show in July. We've got Spitfire over there and some work done to it. Yeah, if ever you get the chance, come down to Duxford. I mean, we've spent an hour, at least an hour in the first hall. Uh, first hall, first hangar, and still haven't seen it all. Luckily we've got yearly passes, so you can get a yearly pass, gets you in here. Also gets you on HMS Belfast in uh, London. Yeah, like I say, this one's having some major works done to it. But that's what to do here. Old Sea Fury. I say you've got all the uh, ones that are all set up. I say these are all privately owned ones that are having maintenance. So some are just having like a minor service, some are having like a full on strip down. If I remember rightly through the anger door over there, you've got um, a flying fortress. Bow fighter over there being restored. Different looking Nimrod, this is, is the older Hawker Nimrod from uh, 1932, obviously before the big recon Nimrod came into action. Is a Boeing Flying Fortress. I think that's the Flying Fortress anyway. It's currently got a naked lady on the side. <laughs> so yeah, it is the B-17G Flying Fortress, the Boeing. I 
obviously uh, RAF had a few of these as well, but ours weren't more, ours weren't really a bomber. Ours went up with um, the Lancasters and all that on the bombing runs, but ours was used as a uh, jamming tools and decoys against the Germans. So ours were a bit more uh, a bit more secretive than what the Americans were. You can see the guns on the front there. So I had some engine work done to it. But yeah, that's like currently building one. Probably building an RAF version in a airfix kit. One so it's everything's airfix. One seventy second. It's also uh, at the Memphis Bell at some point as well. But yeah, loads of players in there. A few German ones down the bottom there. It's not exclusively British and American planes here at Duxford. There are some uh, German ones, German planes as well. There is. Over a boat plane, it's the American version. I say so this is our first time vlogging, so if it all goes completely pear shaped, you'll understand why. <laughs> Are you enjoying it so far, though? Yeah. And so they're actually doing some works on this one as well. Yeah, I've just actually found the info board now on it. It's a Catalina a flying boat. I think I've, once again, I think I've got one of these in the airfix kit built to build as well. I've got that many airfix kits and various planes that the RAF have flown. It's unreal. There's a little shop here that sells them as well, so I might have to see if there's some unique stuff. Looks like I keep looking for a Lysander. So if anyone's got a Lysander in the UK, 172nd scale, PM me. Because I like uh, the proverbial rocking horse to get hold of, a bit like hen's teeth. So, here we go. Something for the tractor fans here. Blue Massey Ferguson. Don't see many of uh, Blue Massey Ferguson. So you just see right down the uh, bottom, you've got a Dragon Rapide. If you come to Duxford as well, you can take uh, flights on the Rapide. You can. Uh, I think you can charter it and go over London, see all the London sites on an old vintage aircraft. Once again, if anyone's got one of them in an airfix kit, let me know. <laughs> Third hang here now at Duxford. A lot of Spitfires in here. Some Hurricanes as well. We've got a Bristol Blenheim with uh, the original nose cone on it that they found. There's a lot of Spitfires here. A lot and a lot of Spitfires. Occasional hurricanes. Well, there's the uh, two-seater Spitfire that you can actually uh, take a ride in around here. Another Nimrod. So yeah, lots of, lots of Spitfires here, it looks like. More over here as well. This is the Air and Sea Exhibition, so... Got a P, uh, P-51 Mustang. we got some of the weird birds here now as well. we got the Gannet. It's like a weird looking Loco by Loco. Uh, loco? I'm not about Locos, these aren't trains, these are planes. Locos on the brain. These are weird looking planes. See so up the gannet. I think this one's the Osprey. I know it's not, it's Avenger. So yeah, both folding wings. Obviously, these used to sit on aircraft carriers. Now you've got the Buccaneer. The uh, airfix. Airfix have just announced that they're doing a booking here this year. The uh, 2019 Cavalier's got a booking here, so I'm quite excited for that. I'll pick up a booking here. I've got, um, I can't think what I've got now. I've got something similar. Got something similar to one of these to, uh, to build. So, yeah, I'll see another, another Harrier. Uh, Harrier, oh, I really can't get my words, I'd say. Another aircraft carrier based like um, airplane. I want to keep calling them locos now. We've got locos on the brain. I want to fly trains again. So, yeah. Now, 
And we've got a Seahawk. I believe this one's a Vixen. Yeah, I got it right. It was a Vixen. I just got the uh, thumbs up from the uh, better half there. It is actually a Vixen. Say hello, better half. <laughs> so yeah, here's a Vixen. Uh, really weird. The um, pilot sits slightly to one side, and his navigator can't actually see anything because he's uh, ducks underneath. So yeah, wouldn't mind having one of these for the collection as well. Very nice. And obviously, you've got the uh, famous Sea King. Now, uh, now retired. Retired the Sea King, has now from uh, active duty. I think this was an HMS Illustrious. They've got the unique Tiger markings on it. The Westland Sea King has six. I think it tells us on the front who. Uh, I don't know, thought it said on the front which uh, carrier it had been on. I thought it was illustrious, but yeah, it's a tiger. So yeah, I say a lot of a uh, lot of planes in here that have been on carriers and aircraft. Ooh. Get a little sneaky peek inside the uh, Sea King here. It's obviously operational for the uh, if you ever get winched in. Let's have a coast guard here, so we can see me in the reflection. Hello. Yeah, still really technical here on baggies, still on a mobile phone. <laughs> Which is really quickly running out of memory, so I'm going to have to jump to the uh, other half's mobile to take some more videos because we've still like got three more hauls to do, including uh, having a look at the B 52 bomber. So, carry on in a minute. So, yeah, in all three now, this is the uh, Battle of Britain hall. So, you got uh, some planes in here from World War One, World War Two, and you've got some stuff in here from the Cold War as well. See, so we've got some white planes over there. I'll take a look in a minute. We've got a hurricane just sat here. So we'll take a little wander around here. Have a look at all the aircraft from all the various wars. The V bomber over there as well. So, yeah, hurricane Mark 2B. We're blowing in just a thumbs up. It's pretty cool. Picture of a crash meshy smith. I think it's a meshy smith. I believe it's a meshy smith. Yay! It's not hard though, is it? All German planes are meshy smiths. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's a meshy smith. I was depicting one crashed in a field. Obviously, blew through a Spitfire and Hurricane. Well, you have to have a spit of fine hurricane, don't you? <laughs> it's a big history, so it's all the World War II stuff. I've only just learnt as well the difference between a hurricane and a spitfire. So the hurricane's got more of a, uh, I don't really, more of a plated canopy, what the uh, spitfire is much more open. It's a bit curious, this little thing here is. It's an auto gyro. It's a. It's, a, 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 it's one of them. I can't. I ain't saying that because it's going to come out all wrong. But yeah, auto gyro. Well, we appear to have missed the World War One planes, but we'll come back to them. Because <laughs> we will. We'll come back to them. So yeah, another tonka, another to tornado in here as well. But this is. Pro Ooh. Right, it's going to be a really seamless edit there because my phone actually ran out of memory. So I'm now on the other half. Uh, I can't remember if you saw the Proctor, but there's a Proctor. And there's a very work stained tornado. Still some major arsenal on that. Yeah, there's lots of stuff going on today as well. So you can actually go inside the Lancaster bomber. We've been inside Concorde, uh, BMAC Comet 3. So, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Here's a Hawker Hunter F, uh, F6A. Got one of these in the collection. I've got lots in the collection of what I've built, but yeah. This is our, uh, I can't even remember what this is, Intercontinental, Intercontinental? Interceptor Fighter, this was. So yeah, nice little Hunter there. Yeah, Hunter and the Tornado, it's like just the sheer size difference is amazing. 
and where we have uh, Lynx as well. Not all planes, some helicopters, so Lynx i 7 Oh, it's Lynx. Goblin turbojet engine. And then we have the very, 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 very bright Vampire. <laughs> you ain't gonna miss that on the Dar Day, are you? See that Vampire. See a 1950s training version of the Vampire there. Used to teach uh, students how to use, or how to use, how to fly jet planes. I think they use the Hawks now, Hawks T1 and T2. Yeah, it's a beast. So yeah, it is an American Phantom as well. It's in Royal Navy colours, but yeah, American. McDonnell Douglas Phantom, FGR2. And this is the plane I was trying to remember earlier on what I've actually got to build. It's one of these. <laughs> it's a Gloucester Javelin. You know, very attractive red and white. I think it's the training colours. Yeah, come a test aircraft. But yeah, very interesting colour screen. The yeah, red and white. Very different. So yeah. They got a Gloucester Meteor. Like really shiny that vampire is. But then you have a MiG-21. I will try and say the name of like, the builders, mig and blah, 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 blah. It's them again. Yeah, I'm not ever going to say that in a million years. I'll just massacre it. I've got a Bedford Fuel Bowser as well. Very scatty in here. I'm just like wandering around now, taking videos. <laughs> it's like here, there and everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I was like we could do a bit of dust there. <laughs> Phantom. Yeah. It's not when you you look at like the models like one seventy second scale models, you think, oh they're quite small planes, but when you start actually walking around them, especially when you go near the bombers, they're absolutely massive. Even the little biplanes from World War One are massive planes. So, yeah. So, a couple of the older World War One. Like I say, I told you we'd come back to the World War One stuff here. But yeah, all canvas, wood, wooden canvas, how how times have changed, so what's that? Like a 1916 plane. That's a 1960s plane, so what, 50 years evolution? So you've gone from a little biplane like this, up to a fast jet. That's a B2C. Another biplane, the old Bristol F2B fighter. Unfortunately, a V1 bomber. A V1 bomber, even. So, yeah, these are what the Germans sent over for us the V1 and the V2 bombs. Yeah, I think, oh, it used to be known as Dougal, bomb, Dougal bombs as well, and the, the noise they used to make from the uh, jet, but that's how they used to launch them. Launch them off a small little runway. And they used to come over, that's what the bomb does with through World War II. Right. That's about, uh, about it in this one. So we'll pick it up again when we go into the next hangar. I've just spotted the little shops next door as well that sell books and stickers and aircraft kits and all that a lot. Of that. So we'll go and have a quick, uh, quick look. Yeah, just notice as well the Meteor's another aluminium coloured plane. So all very different. Like I say, it's a good day out. I think we pay about like, fifty quid for two annual passes. You get you in here and uh, on HMS Belfast. Back at the tornado, just been reading the info on it. It's actually one of the last tornadoes flown operationally. Yeah, how's it got that out? Right, so yeah, so GR4, so this has been over Afghanistan, Libya, ISIS in the Middle East. So yeah, it's one of like, the last, the last uh, combat ones. I'll say it flew in here and it's pulled in here. That's what it's the dirtiest, literally. It flew, it done its job out uh, in the Middle East. It's come here, so they haven't even cleaned it or anything, so it's, it's as is. Obviously, they took all the bombs off it. These were all, like, fake ones they've put on. And all, like, the top-secret military stuff, but it's pretty much as was when it came back from uh, the Middle East. So, yeah, I thought I'd just add that little bit there for you. So, yeah, we're in the conservation hangar now. And then here's a Hadley Page Victor B K1A. This is, I think this is the only surviving original Victor as built as a bomber it like got changed over to refuelers there's Tigger in the front of it yeah this is a 
This is like one of the original ones that are left. And they're trying to restore it back to how it was. So as a bomber again. But yeah, all the wings are over there. You've got bits behind us as well. Got a lot of bits of it. <laughs> bits of it here, like the air brake at the back, tail plane. Random seat. But yeah, trying to restore it back to its original bomber days. A little bit of history on the uh, Victor. Yeah, this is a lot of conservation area. This is where they uh, where they help restore. They're trying to restore the planes up to uh, their standards. So you got Shackleton in here. That's been worked on. Avro Shackleton in bits. Old MR2, Nimrod took the uh, new Nimrod took over from this as a uh, surveillance plane. I believe these are off the uh, Shackleton as well. Even got an old uh, buzz, old on the buzz. Got a hind call hiding up there. <laughs> Just random bits of planes, Hadley Halifax, the forward section. I don't think I've got a Halifax to build. Oh yeah, I've got a Halifax, sorry. The tail turret. Yeah, and this is what happens when uh, military vehicles run over an IED in Afghanistan. I believe this one got rebuilt a few times, but this last hit it took absolutely destroyed the front end of uh, this thing. It's a husky, but uh, yeah, all the occupants were all right inside it. They'd actually designed this to be able to take an IED blast, so bits would fly off it, it looked really bad, but actually, luckily, everyone inside were uh, pretty well protected by it, the old Husky, compared to the old Snatch Land Rovers, so there's a bit of information on the Husky. Yeah. So yeah, they've got it in 20, uh, 2012. But yeah. Amazing what an IED could do. Yeah, it's more bits and more random bits of planes everywhere in here. So this is their conservation area, so this is where everything everything's getting mended. Unfortunately the shop weren't open. I just went into the look at the shop, but the shop ain't open so I can't actually buy any new planes today, which is a bit of a disappointment. Not for the girlfriend, because well, I've got far too many things to build. <laughs> so yeah, there's a, a German periscope, mass periscope. Obviously, the old London bus. Old Bill. Well, it looks of like it's actually served. Yeah, it served in France and Belgium during the First World War. It did. So, yeah. Little tour there in the conservation area at Duxford. I think it's the uh, American hanging out, so I'll be able to show you the B 52 bomber and the uh, Blackbird spy plane. So, yeah, catch you in a minute. So yep, now in the American hangar, and this is the beast, that is the B-52 Strataforce bomber. It is absolutely mahoosive. It is that big that even the ends of the wings have little wheels on it, so when it lands, the wings don't scrape the floor. It is massive. This is the American's main bomber. The big bomber, I think, is actually a version of the B-52 is still used to this day as well. So... Yeah, so you've got all the Phantoms and the Black the Blackbirds over there. We'll take a wander around and see Dakota in the background. But for sheer, so it's true what they say, the Americans do it bigger than anybody else. We poodle around with Victor's, uh, the B-52. It's an absolute beast of a plane. I'd say got like four sets of wheels in the middle just to hold it up. Wheels on the end of its wings as well to help it 
on the ground. It's just it, the wings bend that much. It's like literally you start off with little biplanes and you end up with that. <laughs> so yeah, I'd like say this is all American planes in here. I've got um, Flying Fortress over there, a bit like what we saw in the other hangar. This one's actually built. Well, I say built, it's here. It's not being restored. So yeah, take that one around. Get you up close and personal with some of the uh, American planes. I'll say Dakota's up there. I've no idea what that is. Oh, it's an F F-15 A Eagle. All American planes look the same to me. They do. So yeah, we'll take a wander around. So yeah, she's just near the end of the wing now. On the B-52, as you can see, it's actually on a pylon, so it's a good like three, four foot off the ground. So imagine if that pylon weren't there, the wing would be touching the ground. It's amazing. You got a Mitchell up there. That's a groupman. Yeah, there's a lot of fast jets in there. Oh, it's the Thunderbolt. That was close. It's a Thunderbolt. Oh no, that's not a Thunderbolt. Uh, where's the Thunderbolt? That's a Thunderbolt over there. They all look the same American planes, do. <laughs> they do. Yeah, that looks a bit iffy in here for you. There's a Mitchell up there. We've got a Mustang. But yeah, there's a, another flying fortress. So, I'll say, currently building one of these, uh, but the British version. Oh, yeah. It's in the Royal Air Force version. So, it's a bit different. It hasn't got quite as many guns. It hasn't got the gun right at the back. I'll say, ours is more as a counter, a counter measure against the Germans. So Sending them signals from, uh, so yeah, sending them like, radio messages to confuse them so we could like attack them. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna say it's a uh, looking at the flying fortress, it's actually quite useful. This is about to get some references for my own, but whereas this is all green and grey, the uh, British one's predominantly black, black. Underneath all the backs, all black. It is. Yeah, quite a quite a beast these flying fortresses. I say it's ever there, but it's the American bomber, so it's equi probably equivalent to our Lancaster. I actually got the rear gunner position here. Yeah, I've currently actually I'm just building that section at the moment. I'm just got it all built up it's all clear purse but it's all clear plastic on the uh, air feet so you only have to paint it all up so yeah, you see the mustang up there another silver one obviously got it up in the air so it isn't obviously it hasn't got what well, it's ballast in the front of it so it's holding it up with a big crane at the moment at least you can see the engines on it it's quite cool You can see it underneath the Mitchell up there. Now, wherever you're looking here as well, this is like a B-52 bomber. <laughs> it's just absolutely massive. So yeah, a couple of the uh, fast jets up there. American fast jets, more than B-52. Oop, losing my bag off my shoulder. Yeah, if the camera jerks, it's like I'm putting the bag back on my shoulder. <laughs> it keeps falling down. It is. Yeah, it's a... American tractor there with a bomb on it. So yeah, like I say, just come down to Dutchford. You get time, come down to Dutchford, have a year's membership, it's like 50 quid for two people. And uh, like I say, we've come, we've come down twice now and still haven't managed to do it all. So yeah, it's going to wander around the front of the B-52 now. I don't know about B-52, that's Line Fortress. Yeah, if you now notice I'm on like a pink phone, it's because I've had to borrow the girlfriend's. But I'd say mine's completely run out of battery. <laughs> it has. So yeah, there's the front, there's the engines. I'll be actually studying this video later so that I can actually pick up some colours. For like example, when I've um, built mine, mine's, I've got like the engines all built, fuselages all together, wings on, it's all like the nitty gritty bit, all the gun turrets are going on. Before. Uh, before we do all the painting and mask it all up, but on the on the British version, that gun isn't there. That's actually a radar dome. It is. There's actually a radar dome onto that. 
There's a side guns around, but not that front one. See, that's a Dakota. Just up there. A little bit of the Berlin White, I believe, as well. There's a little piece from uh, the Twin Towers from 911 here as well. That's been put in here. So, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, lot of World War II fighters in here. I don't know any of the names, so... <laughs> I apologise for the fact that I don't know any of the names. But yeah. More guns. The, the, the biggest planes, just like I say, that they all say Americans do it bigger and better, don't they? I don't know about better, but they're definitely bigger. They are the what ours are, so it's just underneath the Dakota, so... I'm pretty sure the white and black uh, denotes invasion stripes when we've done the D-Day, the D-Day landings. And Dakota's raw boat also used in the uh, Berlin airlifts. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, but here is the butte, that is the black bird, the American spy plane, recon plane. This is actually a real Blackbird. Famous for the fact that because it flew so hot so high, it got that hot. They had to design it to stretch. So when it was on the ground, it leaks. Everything, all its fluids leak out of it. Obviously while it's on the ground, it's not subjected to all the heat. That it was up high. Obviously there's one of the engines for it. Yeah, she's like I said, the light's a bit iffy in here for everyone, so I apologise about that. Yeah, here's the engines that were obviously originally in them great holes there. But yeah, it's, it's an amazing piece, aircraft of Blackbird. Flew high, obviously, American spy plane during the Cold War used to keep it so they could keep their eye on what the Russians were up to. Yeah, it was. And we do have a piece of the uh, Twin Towers here on the towers that fell so yeah that's pretty much it for the American one so yeah just come back to anger one just have another quick look at the tornado that's about it from uh, uh, the first vlog here on Baggy's TMD uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it I have hopefully there'll be plenty more vlogs on this channel give me some feedback share it with your friends but yeah just I just thought I'd come for another quick look at the tornado in the Balkans. So yeah, cheers for watching guys. See you later.